I'm here today with Dan O'Flaherty, professor of economics at Columbia University. We're here to discuss his book, The Economics of Race in the United States. It's published by Harvard University Press in 2015. Dan, thanks for joining us. Thank you. You write the most comprehensive book and you kind of, what you might call, you create something out of economics that took tremendous ingenuity to do it. It wasn't like what we'd all find in our syllabus and this an extension. You, you really build the entire structure. What inspired you to, to undertake this endeavor? Desperation. Despair, uh, despair that derives from what? Uh, I was, I wanted to teach a course in the economics of race for undergraduates. Mm -hmm. uh, and I knew that things were connected. Um, and so I had to be able to talk about all of them. I had to be able to do the linkages rather quickly from, from week to week. Uh, I, so I was desperate to teach a good course for people and for me. So uh, despair comes from it's, it's desperation. concern about the issue and the fact that there was not a structure there, there was around not, which yeah, you could build. Yeah, there was not a structure. Uh, there was it. W there was not a structure to satisfy me or to satisfy my students. And um, so I, I wanted to, to create it so that there was something to begin to satisfy me and my students. Mm -hmm. I've seen people, even the New York Times columnist and Nobel laureate Paul Krugman say, when you look at the American economy, race is everywhere. So I think the fact that you, what you might call, burrowed into this terrain and start to excavate and explore is, is an extraordinary contribution. Thank you, but I'm from Newark. How could I not? <laughs> That's a good way to think of it. My first consciousness of race may be the, the, the 1967 riots in Newark. And, everybody in the world coming into Newark and telling us how stupid we were and how smart they were. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you grew up in Newark. I grew up in Newark, yeah. to the extent I grew up. Um, and um, to look at this again as the received wisdom of the 60s. The, the other thing, it's very, very, here it's a, a housing issue, that they say if you get housing right, everything else falls in place. Uh, or uh, if you get therapy right, either therapy or housing in various ways. The other thing that's kind of interesting to, to me um, as far as the discussion about segregation or, or northern cities uh, is that the analysis part says that we should work very clearly on desegregation, on, on breaking up African-American neighborhoods and spreading and, and making the far less segregation. Uh, and then when they get to proposals, it's all about things not to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 it's very interesting in that it's, it's completely contradictory. Mm. Uh, and then I guess... You know, Malcolm X also. Malcolm uh, X, is that's the, right. Uh, okay. Malcolm X is there. That was... Uh, what I like about Malcolm X is whereas Kerner is totally contradictory, Malcolm X is totally consistent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a beautiful example of logic mm -hmm. uh, that um, white people have treated black people horribly, therefore black people cannot trust white people and black people need to take matters into their own hands and uh, work things through. Uh, that the integration project is, is a hopeless project or, or at least is not a project uh, that is likely to succeed. Um, I, I think that's important uh, because that's a real question. Uh, does the United States work? Is it, is it better? And if you, you look at countries around the world, um, minority groups in the United States are much bigger than other countries. I mean, there's talk about independence for Scotland. Scotland is smaller than Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, seen, I've seen references that if African Americans were a nation, the number of 
people with literature awards, athletics, yes, and so forth, they'd be, be one of the most powerful countries they'd, they'd in the world. They'd be one of the most powerful countries in the world. Uh, they would be about the size of Spain, uh, with about the same income, far greater representation uh, in, in the Olympics, far greater representation in literature, um, in far greater probably Im impact on day-to-day on -day culture. Hispanic America, uh, is bigger than Spain and Portugal combined and somewhat richer. Uh, the growth in Hispanic America since 1984 is bigger than the 1990 population of Spain. Uh, Asian America is bigger than Scandinavia, the entire Scandinavia, and somewhat richer, uh, much better educated. Uh, any, any of these groups by itself uh, it would be just a, a very serious, important nation in the world. So we get to the question of why is it good to bring people together, or is it good to bring people together? I think it's M Malcolm, by being so consistent, by being so logical, raises really interesting, important questions. Um, so I have all of these questions, and it's not. If you, if you read these, I hope the, the purpose of reading this is to raise all sorts of questions in your mind. Uh, all of these are like received wisdom today. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody but said they, they're not all usually consistent. They're <laughs> not all usually consistent. Uh, they're entirely inconsistent in, in many ways. I mean, everybody knows that Malcolm and Martin are different, uh, but the, the difference is uh, between. Uh, Du Bois and Myrdal are really significant, too. Uh, so we have lots of advantages, and that's to, to answer these questions. We have 50 years, at least 100 years, uh, of additional time to see what happened. I think Myrdal, I think time actually is a is very serious question. And if, if the Myrdal world is right, one thing going right makes everything go right. And clearly there was a great deal of progress in certain domains in the 1960s, and in most of the domains, in fact, that, that Du Bois signals as, as important, uh, yet by the time that an African American is elected president, you have the highest incarceration rates of African Americans in, in history. Yeah. And we've had Ferguson and Baltimore and Trayvon Martin and Eric and Garner and yeah. all kinds of all episodes kinds of that have been unsettling, unsettling to our society so, in so the, years, so. Uh, the, the simple Myrdal picture of everything, anything makes everything go better is, is, is not the right picture. Well, before we go into the interaction, because you explore that in many chapters, you have an, a next section, which is about what is race? and you're looking at it like a natural scientist. Is race really a category, or is it something that's distinct, or is it a social construction? I, uh, race is a social construction. Uh, There's but not biological The evidence. The biology is, there, there, are, there are correlations. Uh, bizarre, I mean, there, there are definitely correlations between different things, I mean, uh, they're not as strong as there. There is no race gene in the sense that the, there is there there is a gene for gender. Uh, that the, the the correlation between gender traits is very very high. Uh, the correlation between race traits is not very high, uh, because there has been limited intermarriage for various lengths of time. People. There are some correlations. Um, it's not clear that some of those correlations are important. Uh, Tay-Sachs disease, mm -hmm. uh, sickle cell anemia, those are important things to know. There are as, as we learn more genetics, there are more likelihood, there, there's a higher likelihood of a person uh, with curly hair to, with curly dark hair having uh, sickle cell anemia than someone with straight black hair. Um, 
there's also a, a, that's an interesting correlation. Other correlations that we know are purely environmental. Um, people who have straight black hair are much more likely to speak Mandarin than people who don't have straight black hair. I don't think uh, that, that that's genetic. I, I, can, I can give a good explanation for that without appealing to genetics. Um, so when you look, if, if race, as you say, is a social construction, you then move the book through a context, and as you mentioned with Myrdal and others, the interaction of all these things. There's education, employment, uh, I'll call entrepreneurship related to employment, the nature of crime, the nature of health. Uh, you, you have many different dimensions that you explore, and you explore the interaction between them, the interdependencies between them, but you also seem in each case to explore the context in relationship to the individual and how that context may differ whether or not you're African American or Asian or Hispanic or non-Hispanic white. And you do seem, as I call it, in bearing witness in many different contexts. You see, we say, less wholesome outcomes for African That's, Americans. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think one, one of the important things is to, to look at you know, how all of these things link together. In my own reading, there were a couple of things that really stuck out. Uh, one is my father was a physician with a largely black practice in Detroit. And reading about the interaction between physician and patients mm -hmm. based on their race and, and trust and whether people would follow advice from the physician or whether the physician would treat people with respect, be sensitive and listen and form a more, what you might call, textured and supple diagnosis. Those interactions, you kind of created a game theoretic context. I, I, yeah, and I, the other, other people have done that too, but I, I think it's very clear that uh, you know, what we think of as economists as, as very simple transactions are, are, are not at all. Yes. Um, that, you know, when I go to doctors, I'm, I'm a very cynical person. I don't know what they're doing to me. Uh, a patient, not a as consumer. A patient, as a patient, <laughs> as, a, as, 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 as a patient, I'm trying to think, and uh, often I'm trying to be really nice and get them to like me so that they, they do things, but <laughs> I, I, I don't think that just coming, going to a doctor and seeing here I say, hey, here I am, take care of me, make me sound, is, is, is going to, to make me sound. I, I also... But if you're crossing what I'll call historic uh, echoes uh, of racial yeah. animosity yeah. when you're when, when you're that doing patient, that. it may be an even yeah. more I, frightening experience. More frightening. I mean, uh, there, you know, I, I, interracial transactions are very difficult. Uh, things are, are very easy to go wrong. Um, in my, my other experience of that is, is teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when I teach, and I actually read the evaluations afterwards, and I sort of wonder what class they were in. Uh, but uh, when, I'm, when you're teaching, you're trying to figure out what's going on in students' minds. They're trying to figure out what's going on in your minds. These are very complex transactions. And if, if you add 400 years of, 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 of history to it, they become much, much more difficult. And you talk about a variety of different interactions, like teachers drawing inference about who should be put in uh, gifted and talented programs, who should be passing rather than failing, uh, students drawing inference of whether their effort will be uh, what you might call elicit a positive response or not based on the, na the race of the teacher. Yeah. The, these, these are these very complicated. I mean, life is really very complicated. We go around looking at people and making decisions and race because we're Americans is one of the things that we see. I mean, it's, it's a social construct, but that doesn't mean it's unimportant or today is Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Wednesday is a social construct. Uh, if you thought it was Sunday, you'd be in big trouble. <laughs> the uh, uh, other dimension that really surprised me was you talked about the evidence for young black children that whether they had a two-parent household 
or a single mother mattered much less than the mother's education and, and the kind of, what you might say, the environment. That, the environment, And because yeah. and we have seen improvement in some levels of attainment and achievement on the African-American community in the last 10 or 12 years. Yeah as the family structure has changed in the other direction. I thought it was a very interesting finding. Yeah, and uh, the, I mean, the, we pay a lot of attention to the presence of a father. Mm -hmm. uh, and it does, it is an important variable. But from what I've seen in most of the studies, many other variables are better predictors. Uh, some of the people who have looked at uh, family background do say, on average, when they when they when they run the regressions, and they say you know the, the result is black family backgrounds improving, at the same time that uh, the um, presence of fathers is decreasing. But um, lots of things matter. It's it's it, presence of father is not a magic variable. Well, let's let's talk about mother versus father among African Americans. Yeah in terms of incarceration, in terms of uh, employment stability and other things, African-American males have had a pretty rough ride. That, as you talk about the interactions like Mirdal, being in a turbulent social context for a father means when he comes home, there's all kinds of turmoil and there's all kinds of burdens that he's bearing. The quality yeah. of a father is a hard thing to achieve well, for all of us. For but, all of us yeah. but they might particularly, uh, how would I say, share responsibility with society for what they bring home to that child. I, I mean, you can't separate the incarceration, you can't separate housing, you, can, you can't separate health. Uh, and I guess, uh, economists like to specialize in one area, uh, but and that actually makes sense because since I've done all of these areas together, it's a lot harder. Yeah. Uh, but the, you, you, if you spend all of your life concentrating on health, it's a very worthwhile thing. But somebody has to say, how does health affect education? How, how does incarceration affect education? How does education um, affect jail and, and putting these things together in the figure 15? Or how does, if I commute on the Garden State Parkway and I'm African-American yeah. male, I'm about 70 times more likely to be pulled over on the way home. How does that contribute to my stress and yeah. my health and my relations with my yeah. family? Well, there's, it, it, like there's, you say, there's, there's all a lot. It's, 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 it's one piece. We, we, although we like to study one domain at a time, mm -hmm. um, when we live, we live all of the domains at the same time. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the chapter on employment discrimination and what kind of findings you derive there. Okay, uh, there. I mean, this was sort of the classical thing, which we, we've moved away from. There's a, a large. We've reached a point where it's very difficult to trace out what goes on. Um, what you would want to do. Uh, is the, the ideal experiment uh, is to raise people of no color until they get to be 20 uh, and then assign them colors and uh, see how their, their lives play out. Um, I have not applied for funding to do that experiment. What is, is Difficult is is trying to. We know that there is a difference. Okay. The the question is partly whether how much happens before eighteen and how much happens after eighteen. Mm -hmm. um, and at various times, some evidence at various times for some groups points to not a lot happening after eighteen. Um, but it's not clear that you can separate those out because people before 18 are planning for after 18. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the, the types of things that you see have to be brought into consideration there. Um, there does, 
African Americans do appear to earn less with approximately the same background. But again, is there the same background? No, there isn't the same background. You might have degrees, years of schooling, and things of that nature, and test scores, but that's not the whole experience. That's not the whole experience, and years of schooling and test scores have different correlations between blacks and whites. Mm -hmm. And what you're looking at is the whole person. And these are, are different pictures of what's going on. Um, there's also a very big problem on who's employed and who's in the labor force. You, you can observe wages only of people who have jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have large numbers of people who are not employed, if you have large numbers of people who are not in the labor force, if you have large numbers of people who aren't even in the um, household population because they're, they're homeless or in prisons, uh, then you've got a different kind of selection. And as you deal with the selection there, you get very different issues about what's going on, very different results. Um, so that as we've learned more, it's become much more difficult to take out this little piece and, and, and look at this little piece in isolation. So all of these interactions don't leave us with a magic bullet, as you say, towards the conclusion of the book. There are so many dimensions and interactions to study. As you finish this book, almost everybody I've ever talked to as an author says, oh, I would, you know, would have, you know, how do I say, if I had a do-over, I'd do that. <laughs> what, what's the next dimension in your own thinking, or what would the second edition add as a, a postscript? That, okay. that didn't make it to the, um, to the first yes. Little things, I should talk about gentrification, because people want to talk about gentrification. Mm -hmm. um, I, I should talk about white privilege, because that's a phrase that is now used instead of discrimination. I, I, I think that discrimination is a better phrase, but I should explain why I think white privilege uh, is not a better phrase. Mm -hmm. um, I should talk about inequality. We've had a presidential campaign uh, where inequality has been a major issue. And I think you've set a great example for scholars and provided a great service by exploring in such breadth and depth. And uh, I want to thank you for writing the okay. book that you thank did. You, thank you for saying that. I, I hope I got something right in the book. <laughs> yeah, I think I, you did many things right.